Hello and uh, welcome to Trains in Vietic and we're actually in the Modern Railway Room. After a long wait and many comments from many people, we're getting started in here today. So, you might notice different audio and different picture. We're now on my new camera which some of you might have seen during the live streams. And you should have heard these mics during the live streams as well. So today Today we're going to start on a project and then we'll see how far we get. So let's start the title and then you can join me to see what we're planning to do. All of us modern railways always have the same problem, mountings or stuff. So, before I even start on ordering for baseboards, first thing I need to do is plan how to store everything. Luckily, I use these really useful boxes. And most of the stuff, if it isn't currently in a useful box, will end up in a useful box. This is a two-part thing. I am needing to build a base for the baseboards to go on and I also need to sort out the storage. So the idea is actually quite simple. I'm going to store this underneath the baseboard. The idea is whereabouts you are and also along here and along there we're going to have a support whereabout the baseboards actually sit. So the baseboards are on there and then underneath the support we have a space for the storage boxes. So a few bits we need to know is how high the storage boxes are, the tallest one I have, and how wide and how long. Then it means we can have two supports, which will be square boxes with adjustable feet, which I got just here. In this box we've got for adjustable feet. So the idea with these is you set it to whatever height make it all flat. Then you just lock it off with a screw. So there's going to be two of these on each leg as it's going to be square. So it will sit like that. Then you can level that side, that side and that side. Then we'll be able to store one box there, one box there. So this is the plan, so what we're going to do is we're going to pop down to the garage, go into the GoPro and um, start cutting for the wood. So uh, when we do that I'll just have some music on so that you can just listen to it while I'm doing for work. I might explain what I'm doing but it shouldn't be too hard so let's go down there. So while the glues are set on those frames, I should give you some information about this room and measurements in general. 
So I know these measurements already. Across this way, the rims are exactly three meters. Across that way, it's 234 centimeters. So that is actually quite easy. That way I'll be working on 225 centimeters, which will give me space for the, um, what do you call it, the um, radiator. And this way I'll be working on 290 centimeters, which again give me a little bit of space. Also, it means I have space for um, back scenes. So for, for really useful boxes, I have a stash behind me. But this is a really useful box. And I need to work out for a measurement. So that is 71 centimetres. And then across, It's 44 centimetres. The height of this one is incorrect for what I'm doing. But I just happen to have some here. So my tallest one from the floor is 40 centimetres. So working on 40 centimetres around the room will mean that the layout potentially will be the bottom level which is for fiddling yard is going to be about 60 centimeters so one thing with this room is i have this cupboard here so that makes this space a little bit smaller so if i measure it This is one meter forty six uh, centimeters and just over four foot, which is actually quite useful for me because the track have a four foot radius, and we're going to have a helix in that corner. So if I have a track coming in at this side, I can have a helix right into this corner and it won't be causing me any problems. But I need to remember that when getting the boards done. So I'll have a 10 centimeters gap on that side, but not on that side, then it means there's space for the radiator. So planning everything is a little bit hard at the moment, but need to make sure that I'm planning everything correctly. So I now know that the frames have to be minimum of 40 centimetres. So if I do 45 centimetres, that will be just right. That will give me space to push everything in and out. And I now know the distance across here. So once I have put my feet on, which are these here, we can then put the modules down and we can put the first pieces across. So let's, let's see what that hole's looking like. We're now on my uh, handheld camera and you would have seen the um, build on the um, GoPro. So just here is now space for a uh, really useful box. Just here is space for three, just there is space for one. You'll notice that there's a bit of overhang out the side that for shrilling and sh uh, shrinkage. 
So you'll see that we've got screws in these corners. And then at the bottom, if I zoom you in, you can see that there's adjustable feet. So the idea is, once we've got uh, this side done and that side done, we'll then be able to adjust everything so that everything is level. A few things to also point out. This is butted right up to the end. That's butted against the wall. And there's space for my green screen to live. We can see that there's a bit of space there. I need to build two more frames to go here and then route it out to go across there. Um, the boards are actually going to come out, hang up either side. And we've got access to the plugs, so the power will be easy to run. And uh, the CCTV system will also be able to be run underneath there. So I'll just turn around and we can finish this video. As people have asked, we have finally got progress on the layout. It's a start, but it's a start that lead on to the next bit and the next bit. Next week, I'm hoping to actually uh, print out a full, full scale plan of the layout. Then can make sure we know how everything's going to look. If you want to see a review of my new camera, which is the Sony ZV-1, there should hopefully be a link to a new, my new channel where about to review technology. So, thank you everybody for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment. And then next week should hopefully be uh, for printout of a scale, a scale printout of the layout to make sure everything will work. Then the week after this will be something a little bit different. We're going to be look at the Metcalf models I've recently been building and also see how to use the 3D printer to make an improvement to the arm, um, which model is it, for new flat models. So remember to like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell everyone, and I'll see you all next Saturday. Thank you very much, Richard.